it's late at night. You're all warm in your nice cozy bed until a dark entity shows up out of nowhere and tries to drag you to hell. You would be surprised, except this happens all the time. What could it possibly be? We'll let you find out today when we listen to the story. Hey, Hainted Loves, welcome to Homespun Haints. I'm Becky. I'm Diana. And it's bonus time at the Homespun Haints Club. Yeah, y'all remember Tony? Tony, we spoke to him last week. He and his wife, Jill, had some amazing stories to share with us. And we had so many stories, we could not fit them all into that episode. I know, he kept saying... Well, I have another ghost story. And we'd go, ooh, 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 tell yes. us. <laughs> that recording was almost two hours, y'all. So we have broken down his last little story just for you. Just for you, because you're so special. You are. Don't let anyone ever tell you otherwise. No, you're very special. We adore you, yeah. just as you are. Speaking of love, Diana, I understand you had a very, very interesting evening last night of a uh, not haunted basement nature. Oh, gosh. It was. It, it was so ghostly. We're laying down in the dark. We're drifting off to sleep. And we hear. Not that. <laughs> and we hear. And Amber says. What was that? And I said, stupid ghosts. <laughs> We're trying to sleep. <laughs> and then it happened again, right? And then there was like 30 minute pause. 30 minutes? Yep. And then. Uh-huh. And then there was like a 20 minute pause. And then. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was like a 10 minute pause. And then we heard. <laughs> and we were like, oh, it's not ghosts. It's the cat falling down the stairs chasing after a ball. <laughs> it was the sound of a bouncy ball. And we know that bouncy balls appearing out of nowhere and bouncing downstairs are very ghostly. And it scary. was pretty ghostly. Yeah. yeah. Sleeping yeah. in the haunted basement alone, like in the dark and not knowing. When the cat fell down the stairs, I was like, oh, <laughs> surely she's done now. That's great. Nope. She, she picked up the ball. She carried it back upstairs and found Five minutes later, <laughs> just <laughs> and this happened for about seven hours. <laughs> then Amber went and took the ball away. <laughs> She's very cute, but nobody was up to play with her. She's a nocturnal creature. Now, this is the spooky part. These bouncy rubber balls keep appearing in our house, <laughs> and I have no idea where they come from. From the cat. She manifests them when she has no one to play I with. I think so. I think she's manifesting them because we have never bought balls like this or brought anything like this into the house Uh oh and they're showing up in different colors they're getting bigger hmm. i don't know where they're coming from <laughs> but this latest one that she found is she can barely get it in her mouth it's such this big giant pink ball. it's firm it's like a, a legit super ball it's something you would buy to play with your dog or your cat with. it's something that makes quite a noise when it drops on the floor from the height of a cat mouth Yes. Strangely. And especially if she's standing at the top of a staircase and drops it down the stairs so that she can chase after it. So she's throwing the ball and chasing after it. Best possible scenario is a cat that plays fetch with herself. Unless something else is throwing the ball for her. <gasps> well, I didn't actually confirm with my eyes that it was dropping from the height of a cat mouth. It didn't really sound that way. It sounded like it was dropping from a great height. Maybe whatever brought her the ball is also playing with her. <laughs> She's a strange creature. And for those of you that are worried, she did not actually fall down the stairs in a scary way. She does kind of somersault down the stairs, but she knows exactly what she's doing and she's doing it on purpose. And she's just like a giant ball of fluff. <laughs> <laughs> Very heavy fluff tumbling down. So she kind of wafts down she the wa stairs. Wafts. Well, <laughs> like she's got a high surface area. Unfortunately, sometimes the back feet go before the fore feet and... <laughs> She just gets very excited going after that ball. So, yeah. Well, I hope she has a ghost to play with. I hope so, too. I mean, it sounds that way. All right. Let's hear from something that is the opposite of a cute kitty rolling down the stairs. It's actually something quite evil. And you, 
you, dear hainted loves, can decide what exactly is it that Tony and I experienced in this story. When I was a child, I had this reoccurring dream where this entity would pick me up and carry me to the basement and try to pull me into this dark hole in the wall. Now, we didn't have a dark hole in the wall, but it always tried to pull me there. And the presence of this thing has never left me. It's still with me. The darkest place in my house is where I could feel all the energy And I told it, I can feel you. I know you're here. So you're not going to be able to mess with me as easy as you used to. He's still with me. He didn't go away. So anytime in my life when I'm making some positive changes, that's when it comes at me again. I'm freaking out a little bit because I used to have the exact same dream. Oh, get out of here. It wasn't in the basement, though. It was like a hole in the closet of my bedroom that I kept imagining it was going to pull me into. And it was so real that up until college, if I walked into a room and tried to turn the light on and it didn't come on for some reason, I would freak out. I would scream because I'd have these recurring dreams of the darkness coming after me. Yeah, such a strong presence of negative energy. These things happen to me like every day. It's just my life. I was having this horrible nightmare. And this nightmare was so bad, I was going to have a heart attack and die in my sleep. I was absolutely sure. And then the dream turned to a vision. And in this vision, I was standing in the hallway looking at the front door. And it had one of those small triangular windows in it. And through that window, I saw this bright yellow light and it kept getting brighter and brighter and brighter. And then it came through the window to where I was standing in a hall. Then it materialized into my father and my father hugs me and he says, Tony, it's okay. It's okay. He had been dead for six, seven years already. When he put his arms around me, he allowed me to feel the other side. So I'm not saying I was in heaven, but he allowed me to feel what it feels like. And it's hard to put into words, but it's all love. There's no hatred. There's no pettiness. There is no anger. All of the stuff that's bad here isn't on the other side. It's just not there. It doesn't exist. He gave me tons of knowledge about so many different things. And that is what put me on my journey. Now, that house, my dream, is the house I live in now. I didn't live there when I had the dream. But it's this house A documentary was being shot at our house, and we were being interviewed separately. One at a time. Jill did her interview, and everything was perfect. No problems at all. Then they did my interview in the same spot. And I'm watching one of the cameramen, and he's, like, looking at his camera. You know, it's on, the camera's on a tripod, and he's looking, and he's like, oh, And I'm, I'm behind him, so I can see that it just went black. Poof. And then <laughs> his camera comes back. But then one of the the other other cameras does the same thing, goes black. So when the interview is done, the cameramen are like, hey, has anybody died in this house? And I'm like, well, yeah, the, the previous owner died in this house, but I knew it wasn't the previous owner. I didn't want to tell them what it really was. It was that entity that stays with me. So whenever I'm doing something positive, it does something to me to mess with me or around me. And he screams in his sleep when it messes with him. But I'm not afraid of it at all. It's because I'm fighting with him is what Mm. she hears when I'm sleeping. So the entity, if you had to speculate about his nature, is he something from outside of you coming to you? He's definitely from somewhere else. 
He's never been a person. I don't feel person from him. And I say him, but really, it's just an entity. We've heard from other people with gifts who've had similar negative entities hanging on to them. And they speculate it's because they're supposed to be doing really good work that changes the world. And this negative entity is trying to prevent that from happening. Yes, exactly. That's how I feel it. For years, I've been wondering where it comes from and why me? This is only me speculating. So I have to go back to my father and his father. I never met my grandfather. He came to this country by way of Jamaica. But before that, it may have been Cuba. My grandmother was also from Jamaica. They moved here in 1910, somewhere around there. My grandfather, from what I'm told, was a salesman. But he abandoned my grandmother and the kids, so my father, his brother, his sister. He just took off. Later, I found out that he was very fair complexion, so he was passing as American white. But then when they saw my grandmother, she was also very fair skinned with straight hair, but they knew that she wasn't just straight white. So he lost business because he was married to a woman that had some pigment in her skin. So he took off. He just left. So I didn't learn this stuff till a few years back. One of my daughters is an attorney and she started doing some checking. So she found out that he had moved to New Orleans and changed his name to Hassel or Haskell. And he was a bigamist because he got married but never got a divorce. So he was a bigamist also. So later, my daughter followed his trail. So she said he worked this job, that job, and then he was a doctor. What? So all of a sudden, he's a doctor. Okay. There's no record of him going to medical school. None of that. Right? Okay. These were the days where all you needed was a sign. (laughs) Exactly. But I speculate that he made a deal with someone to sell off his grandchildren, to sell off their souls so he can become wealthy. What a jerk. And that's me speculating. Yeah, but you got intuition. If that's what you think probably happened, then I think you probably have a good reason to believe that. Yeah. You know, you know things. You can see things. I always wondered about that, if that sort of pact would hold up in paranormal court. Like, you were not privy to this agreement. (laughs) We'll have to ask Tony's daughter about that one. (laughs) (laughs) Whoa. But it does make sense. Yeah. And really, my siblings, overall, we're doing, we're all doing pretty good. But we've been through some real stuff, horrible stuff. And I'm like, why is this happening to all of us? Why? And then I'm like, oh, no, this is adding up. It comes after all of us. The only difference is I can feel it when it comes. I know it's there. So, Becky. Yes, Diana. You mentioned... You also had this dream. Yeah, yeah. In fact, when Tony was telling me the story, it gave me absolute shivers. It really brought back some memories that I had not thought about for a while. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Is that a common thing as a child to have recurring nightmares of something dragging you into a hole in the wall that's not there? I don't know. I mean, it's very common to have recurring nightmares in childhood. In my dream, it's like I knew that was a hole into another dimension, if that makes any sense. In the dream, did your child self know what was on the other side? I knew that it was sadness, depression, the worst of the worst. And I also knew that once I went in, I was stuck there. And the only interaction I could have with the outside world is if I were able to crawl to the edge of the hole, which I would do in my dreams after I'd been dragged in, I'd crawl to the edge of the hole and I could see a little shimmer of light coming from my bedroom. So I was looking at the bedroom, my bedroom, from inside of the hole, which, I I mean, this is interesting that I would have this perspective in the Mm -hmm. dream, right? Mm -hmm. From inside of the wall, I could see my bedroom. And in my dreams, people would come to see if I was okay, 
because I was stuck in the hole. But they didn't want to stick around because it was so depressing. And over time, everybody just left. And I was in the hole forever. Do you think the hole is where hay came out of? <sighs> Could be. I don't know. It was the same bedroom. Yeah. I just think that whole house was haunted. Something was going on there. Clearly. There's different types of dreams, of course. I mean, if you have a prophetic dream, which indicates that something is going to happen. If you have a dream from somebody else's viewpoint, like I believe that I might have had when I was a kid living in the basement and I had a bunch of dreams from the perspective of some other entity looking in at me from outside the room. And then, of course, there's most people believe that dreams are fraught with symbolism from yeah. your subconscious. Mm -hmm. Very Jungian, um, yes. In mm -hmm. fact, you can go see a specialist who specializes in Jungian psychology and have your dreams analyzed. I'm sure you could with the symbology of dreams. Mm -hmm. Semiotics. Uh, there's so many books you can buy that are like, a snake represents this, a yellow <laughs> snake represents this kind of this. It's subjective. And it is very subjective. And, and there's uh, another school of thought that's basically like, well, when you see an image in your dream, what does that image mean to you? That's what your subconscious is trying to say. So when you see a snake and you think, I am afraid of snakes, they might kill me. That might be an image that means uh, you're afraid of dying because of that. But then there's another school of thought that indicates that specific types of things are specific types of symbols. For example, um, any structure or building indicates your mindset. Any vehicle or moving structure indicates your physical body. Any animal or non-human character in the dream indicates a habit. Any human character in the dream indicates whatever your top feelings about that human are. Of course, a lot of people believe that dreams are just random images. <laughs> I believe that dreams are, most cases, they are. They're random firings in our brain. But we are intelligent beings, and we want to make sense of those random firings. And so even though it's random, our brains are making sense of it in the best way that they know how. And it's producing images for us that, if we analyze it, can help us understand our deepest fears, or what's bothering us. I have used dreams to work through a whole host of issues. I have used dreams to figure out problems. I've had solutions come to me in my sleep for very complicated situations. It's a very, very useful tool. Our brains are incredibly powerful. And when we just let them kind of do whatever they want to do and try to make sense of all these random firings, it is amazing what you can come up with. Especially because in a dream, you're getting messages from your subconscious, as opposed to when you're just sitting there thinking, do, 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 I should go eat some cherries now. You know, you're getting messages from your conscious, which is kind of stupid compared to your subconscious, right? Exactly. I mean, yeah. Because it's, it's just such a tiny little bit. It's so misled by the outside yeah. world, your subconscious You know, mind. it's like that picture of the Titanic hitting the iceberg, and then you see how much of the iceberg was under the Titanic. Is that an inspirational poster? <laughs> yeah, that's your subconscious, right? It's also very powerful. Now, that being said, I also personally believe that since you are getting all of these random firings coming in, and you're in a liminal space yourself, in this space, you're not conscious, but you're not unconscious in the medical sense. You're in this in-between state. And humans for thousands of years have believed that we receive messages through our dreams. Even as far back as the ancient Egyptians believed that you could communicate with the gods in your dreams. You would have a god come to you in your dream and tell you what to do. And then you wake up and you would do it. We have always kind of had this belief, this sense, and it's up to you whether or not you believe it, that you have the ability to communicate with something on the other side, be that a ghost, a deity, an alien, whatever, while you are asleep. And that is something that's a very interesting concept to explore. And it definitely seems like what's happening with our guest, Tony, and quite possibly you, Diana. Maybe so. In your Maybe basement. So. Yeah. So, Hainted Loves, what do you think? Speaking of questions... Diana and I 
want to know your questions. We're always asking you guys questions. We want to know if you have any questions for us. Yes. So you can email us at info at homespunhaints.com if you have a question for our show or Becky or Diana, myself, about anything that you feel was left unsaid at any of our episodes in the past, or if you have a specific question about ghosts, we'll do our best to answer your questions. Or if you just want to know what brand hair dye we use. I mean, yeah, whatever. We're, we're pretty cool. Yeah, we're pretty cool. It's true. If you do have a question for us, we would love to introduce a new segment to our show where we answer our listener questions. So if you have a good one, shoot it over to us in an email before our next episode airs and you might hear your question on the air. And... We hope you join our Patreon at patreon.com slash homespunhaints. And we hope that you follow us on TikTok at homespunhaints. Also, Instagram, Facebook. Hopefully you're keeping up with us that way. We answer a lot of questions that you might have in your mind after our episodes on our social. So check us out there. But if we don't have the answer posted for you, my dear, you deserve an answer. Send us an email. And in the meantime, have a spooky day. Homespun Haints is hosted by Becky Kielimnik and Diana Doty and produced by Homespun Haints Media LLC. Editing and music by Becky Kielimnik. Show notes by Diana Doty. If you have a ghost story and you'd like to be considered as a guest for this podcast, please visit our website at homespunhaints.com slash submit.